So it's New Year's, right? The New Year's, um, well, it means a lot of things, right? So uh, we're starting off 2019. I, I want to do so in a way that, that we can think about how we can give glory to God. I came across a couple stories uh, that I want to share, short, short little ones with you. Uh, there's a, a lady, and she said she went to the doctor, and the, the nurse asked how much she weighed. And she said uh, 135 pounds, and then she weighed, got weighed, and the scale said 160. Then the nurse asked how tall she was, and she said, I'm 5'6", and, and uh, then she measured, and she was 5'3". Then she took, uh, the nurse took the blood pressure and, and uh, told the lady, uh, it's high. And the lady said, of course it's high. When I came in here, I was tall and slender. Now I'm short and fat. There's another lady who uh, says her and her sister decided to take a, a picture of her mother and father out of a frame. It was one that they started, uh, they took when they started dating uh, 60 years ago. And they took the picture out and, and they thought, you know, they'd see on the back of it names and a date, like a lot of times we do on the back of the picture. But on the back of the picture, all it said was 128 pounds. She wrote how much she weighed, not what year it was, right? We don't all like growing older, right? It's, just, it's not always a, a fun thing. Maybe if you're little, it does. We watch uh, America's Funniest Home Videos, still a, a thing, right? There was uh, an episode this week, and it had a little toddler squirming, trying to do that, and, and his mom asked, what are you doing? And he said, I'm trying to grow up. So when you're real little, I think you like to grow up. There comes a point, I don't know when that point is, uh, when we no longer like to be getting older, right? Um, because, well, I, I think part of it is there's, there's that fear there, right? We, we don't know what is ahead. We don't know what is coming up next. I think New Year's kind of has that same, uh, that same kind of thought behind it, right? We are getting a year older in 2019, and there's going to be something that's going to come up in this new year, and, and this new year's going to have these experiences that we can't predict, and we just don't know what this new year has for us, right? So we have different responses as New Year's comes, right? Some of us say, well, thank goodness 2018 is behind us and we're moving forward and, and, and going for that, and that's a good thing. Some of us are, are dreading maybe what's going to come in 2019 because we just don't know, or we just don't know, because it's a new year, a new experience, which is, it's weird that we would actually dread that, right? Because, uh, because new mostly sounds good to people, right? We all like it if we're talking about a new possession, right? a new house, new car, new clothes, new pick your thing, right? New usually sounds good, but new isn't always good, right? What was Christmas? A couple weeks ago, we've already got a couple Christmas toys that are broken right now, right? So new isn't always something that lasts forever. New isn't always something that is good, but the new year can be. The new year can be. And I think it's how we approach it. I think it comes into how uh, we, we go into this new year with the right attitude. And one of the ways we do that, and, and one of the things I think is very important to think about as we start the new year, is how we can be better people. Better people in, in general, and more importantly for Christians, better people in the eyes of God. Because it's, it's our relationship with God that makes the bad things better. It's a relationship that God that, that gets us through the tough times. So what we need to work on, I think, it's a good thing to look at. It's a good time at the beginning of the year to evaluate how our relationship with God can be better. So that's what I want to talk about a little bit this morning. A couple steps we need to, to take, a couple things we need to think about, a couple attitudes we need to have if we want to better our relationship with God. And, and really, who, who doesn't want that? So I'm going to be reading out of Romans chapter 13. If you've got that, go ahead and, and turn there to Romans chapter 13. I'm just going to read a few verses. We're going to do about one at a time and kind of take this in steps as, as the author of Romans kind of walks us through what it is that, that we need to do, right? what it is that we, we need to, to have in our lives if we want to better our relationship with God. So let's look at the Romans chapter 13. I'm just going to read verse 11 for now. And do this. Knowing the time that, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is near, nearer than when we first believed. Step one, first thing that we're encouraged to do here is wake up. It's, it's an interesting thought, right? But it's, it's very important, right? When we start a new day, when we start a new project, when we start something exciting, what's the first step to doing that? Most of the time, a lot of times, is to wake up. There was a Sunday school teacher, and she asked uh, asked her kids why it's necessary to be quiet in church. And one of them replied, because the people are sleeping. That's, that's real life sometimes, right? There are, are times when 
the spiritual things in life uh, we just kind of sleep through. There's a story of Winston Churchill who was, uh, he was in there and, and, and hearing from his, his main rival. And, and uh, uh, during that, uh, Winston Churchill kind of fell asleep. And his rival stopped and said, Mr. Churchill, why is it that you sleep? Must you sleep while I talk? And Churchill replied, no, I, I do so ch- purely by choice. Purely by choice. Sometimes we sleep through church, through spiritual matters, through things in life by choice. I would say that most people that are spiritually asleep are there by choice. A lot of people just don't care to be woken up, right? There's that attitude of, I don't care and I won't do it. And that's the attitude that sometimes we Christians have toward God, toward Christ, toward all things holy, right? It's, it's that, that idea that either we've went through it enough or we've experienced it enough or we've heard about it enough that we don't need to anymore, so deliberately, on purpose, by choice, we sleep. And that's what's hurting our relationship with God, right? And that's what the author of Romans here tells us to do. It's time now to wake up. It's time now to get up. Paul isn't writing this, Paul, we think, anyway, the author of Romans, whoever it is, isn't writing this book to a bunch of unbelievers. He's writing this book to Christians, to the church in Rome, He wants them to know that it's time now to wake up. It's time now to pay attention. Christians are guilty of this, aren't we? We sometimes just fall asleep. All right, like communion. We we take communion on a regular basis. We go to church on a regular basis. We sing hymns, some of them the the same ones, right? And, And eventually we just kind of fall asleep. Are we possibly sleeping in the times when we need to be drawing close to God? Is it possible that we're asleep in a way that is, is hurting our relationship with God? I think it's absolutely possible, right? Because I think sometimes we lack some enthusiasm for God, don't we? Isn't it amazing? You ever go to like a, a sporting event and hear all the people cheering, right? You ever go to a sporting event with somebody uh, that you go to church with? Right? And they're cheering and they're loud and they're excited or a concert or an event or, a, I don't know, a, a cooking show on TV. Something that somebody gets really excited about, right? And then you come to church and they're the quietest ones in the, in the place. It's because we just don't get excited about stuff all the time. Could it be, possibly, that it's our lack of enthusiasm that is kind of hindering our relationship with God? I think, I think it's, it's possible that that is what happens, right? We don't get excited about the things of God anymore, right? We lose enthusiasm, we fall asleep. So the question is then how do we, well, how do we wake up and how do we wake up the ones around us, right? That's, a, that's an important piece of, of, of something to think about, right? We've got to, to think, what can we do to wake up somebody that's, that's asleep? Well, we could do a lot of things, right? We could uh, you ever seen those like rattlesnake church services, right? You think people would wake up if there was a bunch of rattlesnakes up here? I think probably so, right? We could do something like that, but I ain't going to do that. I don't really like snakes that much, right? It's not good. I think the better idea is to do what Christ encourages, encourages us to do. I think what he wants us to do is to serve and love and teach and pray. What he wants us to do is live the life like he did, Right? And hopefully somebody will catch fire. I, I will challenge you to say if you're the one serving and loving and teaching and praying that, that you'll catch fire, that you'll wake up. Right? You find yourself sleeping. Here's the, the way to wake up. If you find people around you sleeping, it's not slap them in the head with a Bible. It's continue to love them in a way that they can see Christ living in you. That's what we have to do. It's good for them and it's great for you. Right? We need to wake up in 2019. That's, that's between you and God. Here's some good ways to do it. Live like Jesus did. Because we have to. We've got to love. We've got to serve. We've got to teach. That's who Christ called us to be. Continue back here in Romans chapter 13. Start with verse 12 here. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly. As in the day, not in the revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. So what's Paul saying here, right? It's 
Time to wake up, got it. Once you get to be awake, you've got to clean up a little bit, right? No one likes to really stay dirty, right? You get done with something, you get done uh, with, the, with the day, you get done, get ready to start the day, right? Everybody likes to get cleaned up. But when it comes to things in this world, sometimes we don't really want to clean up, right? Now, I'm not saying that most of us are out murdering people and robbing banks, right? That's not what we're doing. But I will say that we all struggle with some kind of sin in life. And what Paul is saying here is that it's time right now to clean up. There's a sin of some kind that's dragging you down, whatever it might be. And it may, may be something that, that you've thought in the past was small. I'll use my go-to, speeding. Here's what's really cool about Apple Maps. Now it shows you the speed limit on there. And when you've got a seven-year-old next to you navigating, he can tell how fast you're going and how fast you're supposed to be going. It's fantastic. He can also read stop signs that say stop that I kind of roll through a little bit. And he understands what stop means now. You ever want to know how much you sin? Spend a couple days with a seven-year-old. They'll let you know what you did wrong. You didn't brush your teeth for three minutes. How come you get to watch TV before bed, right? All these things get to come. All this stuff you think you are doing okay, seven-year-olds will point out what your flaws are. I will tell you, we all struggle with sin of some kind, right? We're, we're, we're not out there doing the, the crazy stuff maybe, but, but we do have sins in our lives we struggle with. Maybe it's, it's gossip, maybe it's lies, maybe it's, um, I, you name it, right? There's all kinds of, of things that can get in our way of having a relationship with God. And that's the big part about sin that's harmful, Right? is that it, it hinders your relationship with God. If 2019 is about getting closer to God and bettering that relationship, then part of what we have to do is work on those things that stop us from having that relationship with God. And sin does that. Sin separates God from God's people. Right? God isn't sin. God can't, can't have sin. God can't sin. But when we do, we, we cause a problem there. Right? And God is, is not happy about that. God doesn't want that divide there. God wants to spend time with us. He wants to know his people. So what we've got to do, we've got to work on getting rid of those sins in our lives. And there's one way we can do that, with God's help. We, we've got to have God's grace to remove those things in our lives, right? Right? God created us, God made us, God, God made people, God knows our weaknesses, God knows that we walk with him to get our strength. And that's what we need to do. Every step of the way, every day of our lives, what we need to do is keep him in mind. That's how we grow. That's how we get rid of sin in our lives. And let God guide you to what those sins are. Let God show you where those places are that are hurting your relationship with him. That's what God wants to do. God wants nothing more than to know you, to connect with you. And if there's something in the way, God will show you and help you get rid of that thing. Right? We can ask for God's grace, we can ask for God's mercy, and we can continue to get better in our relationship with God by His grace, by His power, by what He does for us. Right? So we wake up, we clean up, right? we're alive to spiritual matters, we're present in the spiritual times, we're working on improving our lives and living a life that reflects him because we know that's how we connect with him. And then we have to do what verse 14 talks about. Verse 14, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill its lust. So wake up, clean up, and in the end, what we have to do is dress up, clothe ourselves, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. What we need to do is dress up. Now, we live in a culture, right? The, the, this is one thing we talk about, right? We dress up or dress down. Casual is, is, is the in thing, right? We see a lot of that, and that's okay, right? That's, that's no, I'm not saying everybody needs to wear suits and ties and vests all the time. That's not what I'm talking about. You ever see those pictures of, of the old days, right, where people are out in the fields farming, and they've got the full, looks like a full suit on? I'm not saying we go back to that, right? Casual dress is fine, but that's not what God wants from us on the inside, right? We've got the way we appear on the outside, but what's going on on the inside? The real us, right? We all know, right? We all have at times in our lives not felt the best physically, but you put on your best outfit, you put on your best dress, and you get ready and you go through life anyway, right? You don't feel like getting out of bed, but you get dressed anyway and you accomplish it. 
The real you is suffering and hurting and not feeling great. But the outside you puts on the smile and everybody thinks you're okay, right? God knows better. And what God's concerned about isn't the outer appearance. God is concerned about the inner you, the real you, who you are on the inside, right? That battle you've got within yourself, right? That, that, that thought of, of, of who you are on the inside and then that, that desire then to hide it from everybody else on the outside. Here's the truth. We all have those inner struggles, right? We've all got that dark side. We've got that battle inside of us, right? We just talked about what we call that in Christianity. We call that sin, right? We, we have these desires that our, our human body and our human mind have to do, and then we've got the idea of what we know Christ would want us to do and what we find ourselves doing. At least I think Christians, a lot of Christians do this. I know I'm guilty of it, is, is presenting ourselves one way to God and then one way to ourselves or everybody else. God knows better. God's looking past that. And what God wants us to do is dress up our inside. Romans 7.15 says, I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do, I do not do, for, but I hate what I do. What Paul says is, I try to do good, I can't do good, I do bad, and I hate what I do when I do bad. This is a struggle, even for the best of Christians, even for those who struggle daily to follow Christ. We all have that darkness within us. None of us, are as good as Jesus. We're just not. He knows that. He gets that. And he wants to help us get there. What we've got to do is figure out how to dress up with Christ. Verse 14 of Romans chapter 13 tells us that. How do we do that? We put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We clothe ourselves with the character of Christ. We act like, behave like, become like Jesus was. Who Jesus is in our lives. Here's the thing. This doesn't happen overnight, right? It's not like we wake up, look in our closet, pick out the outfit. That's the Jesus outfit. Now I'm all good and I go on with life. That's not how it works. This takes time. This takes energy. This takes effort. This takes commitment. Now this takes developing in our lives routines and habits and thoughts and training ourselves to become like Christ, we see it every year, this time, this time of year, right? It's, it's, the, it's the fitness time of year, right? Everybody is all about getting fit, losing weight, being healthy. And, and part of that, you'll hear all of these stories about people who've done so, right? Like, I lost 200 pounds. I, I lost all this, all this. And it starts a lot of times, as you see, with small little choices, right? You can't drop 300 pounds overnight. You, you can't change your lifestyle in a second, it takes time. It takes waking up. It takes commitment to go to the gym. It takes commitment to eat healthy. It's not just something that, that is a, a spurt, right? A lot of times, we as Christians are like the fitness people are right now. You go to a gym right now, it's very busy, very packed. You go in a month from now, less packed. By March, it's back to how it was in November, December, right? That's how we are as people. We're fickle. We try, we commit, and then we lose interest, and then we go back to the way we used to be. I think we do that a lot of times with Christianity, right? We get fired up. We get excited. God gets us through a difficult situation, and we say, you know what? I'm going to read. I'm going to pray. I'm going to study. I'm going to know God. I'm going to connect with God. I'm going to be serious about this. And then, you know, that happens. Things get better. We fall off. We forget about it, and we go back to, to who we, want, we once were. If we truly want to connect with God and change our relationship with God, we've got to start those habits, right? We've got to start those spiritual thoughts, those spiritual attitudes, that, that life of prayer and letting God speak to us. That's what, the, that's what Scripture's about, right? Reading Scripture, praying to God, singing songs to God, being in church. It's not because God says you must do X, Y, and Z. It's because when we do those things, we give God the opportunity to talk to us. We open up our hearts and our minds to him and we let him speak to us. And we just said, if we want to change, if we want to, to get closer to him, we have to do it by his grace and with his mercy. If we open up ourselves to that, he will do that. He will work inside of us, but we've got to give him the chance. If we build up walls and shut ourselves down and ignore the things of God, if we sleep through the things of God then he's not offered the opportunity to work inside of us. And that's really what he wants. Give God that chance. 
Give God the, the, the ability. Give God the, the opportunity to work inside of you. That starts with kind of getting up with these habits, right? Walking with God daily. Being those people who love and serve and teach and, and guide and show people who Jesus is. Having that attitude to wake others up and in the process wake up yourself. That's what we have to do, right? And it starts with just something small, just something little, letting God get a chance to speak to you. We've all got changes we can make, right? All of us want to better our relationship with God. That's not going to happen by doing the same things we did yesterday. Right? If we want to better our relationship with God, we've got to change something. Our daily life, our daily walk needs to change if we want Christ to come in us and truly, really change us. It's a new year. Let's make this year a better year. Right? Not better things, not new things, but a, a, a better year for us as a person. Let's be more like Jesus in this world this year. Let's let Christ work in us and change us. The only way we can change, the only way we can become better is with Jesus Christ doing that work for us. Right? And that's what we need to do in 2019. That's my challenge to you. Make those changes. Let God work inside of you. Be more open to the things that God wants to talk to you about. And let God do what God does in our lives and transform us so we can give him glory through the way we live. It's 2019. I'm not saying go make some resolutions because resolutions fail a lot of times. I'm saying start with something small, right? Start with something small. A little goal, some, some small change. Open your heart up and let God do what it is that God wants to do with you and for you. Anybody have anything this morning? All right, let's sing one more song.